Happy. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas. Good evening and welcome to the New Orleans State Palace Theater for a much anticipated main event. 12 rounds in the heavyweight division between these two great warriors. When you get a fight like this that everybody's been talking about, it's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. Teddy, what role can the fans play on the fighters? The atmosphere of the arena when they know there's two guys meeting up that can bang. An immature fighter, a less experienced fighter, can get caught up. He can try to satisfy the audience. That's a quick way to be going into the shower earlier than you wanted to. Teddy, what does he need to do right here? He has no balance. His legs aren't underneath him. Well, you know he can't move because he's going to fall on his own or the referee's going to stop it. So believe it or not, he's either got to grab or he's got to stand on the rope, stay right in front of the guy and move his head to make a miss. He can't use his legs. Uppercut, he comes right back with it after taking one. Excellent counterpunch by Thomas. Good looking right hand after he got hit. Nice block by Thomas. What do you think is most misunderstood about the heavyweight division? I think it's human nature for people to see these big goliaths that they start to think that, hey, they're more sure of themselves. That these guys have more of an abundance of security about themselves, about confidence. And really, it's the opposite. In some ways, these big giants, they're really unsure of themselves because they know they can do damage. They're also worried about damage being done to them. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. A headshot blocked. Final 10 seconds. <laughs> Round comes to an end. And that's one of those rounds, Teddy, that just takes on a certain style, a certain characteristic. And that was a busy one. Yeah, it was a busy one. Look, Joe, you don't have to look for these guys. They're right there in front of you. Why do you think that is? Why do you think sometimes you just get those rounds where it all happens? Because of styles. You know, styles make fights. In this case, you're seeing proof of that right there. Both guys that are aggressive, both guys that are very confident. Blocks that punch. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Counters back against his opponent. He scored well after being hit himself. Now he's just walking him back a bit there, up against the ropes. Nice job to land that counter punch and getting away from one of his own by bad intentions. 
He's got his guard up really well that time, and it protects his head. Halfway through round number two. He pulls the trigger right away with the left hand after getting tagged himself. Good job protecting himself. Her defense into offense comes back with the counter punch. And that's exactly... Wow! Thomas is in a bad place right now. He was Come tagged. on now, work it out. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Nice block that time. It was intended to the head. You need to block more. Needs to improve that accuracy, missed with the headshot. Thomas is not showing us that he understands just how effective he can be if he went downstairs against his opponent. Yeah, well, you know what you're saying, Joe? You're taking a peek and you're taking a swipe without meaning at his trainers. Because what he's telling you is he hasn't been taught some of the rudiments of boxing. That when you hurt a guy, you should go downstairs to finish him. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. And this round comes to an end. It is a round that was highly entertaining. These guys really put forth quite an effort. Well, they both have high engines. They have motors that never stop going. Off the road, off the road, Very nice job landing that counter punch, getting away from one that was coming at him. able to land the headshot on the mark the counter punch by Thomas that worked out really well throwing off the right hand after getting tagged like that very clever move there. A little defense turns to offense. The counter punch by bad intentions. Putting him in position against the ropes. Nice block. And a well-placed counter by Thomas. Well, maybe one of the most impressive characteristics and traits in all of boxing. We're seeing it on display here. He has an iron chin. Fine fundamentals, good counter punch. Counterpunch by bad intentions. Good block by bad intentions. Well off the mark by Thomas. Thomas has got a way of just getting away from that punch. Able to get away from that headshot with the block. And a smart counter punch by Thomas. A little deep. 
defense turns to offense by bad intentions. We come to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that and say, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is, if I'm a judge, I take a little notepad and I make a little mark down blue and red corner what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. He just missed that shot up top. Great movement to get away from those punches. A crafty counter punch after a fine defensive effort by bad intentions. And a sharp counter punch by bad intentions. But, Teddy, it's what's ahead that's the problem. Yeah, we're getting a peek right now into his heart, into his soul. Good block by bad intentions. The tactical game paying off. You can see the counter punch. Yeah, you see the counter punch, but you know what I see? I see a little tentativeness now in him because he's afraid to let anything go because when he misses, bang, he gets caught. Bad intentions, his favorite punch is the jab. And tonight, he's loving it. Well, the jab is the table setter, Joe, and he set a beautiful table tonight. Napkin on the left, you know, small fork on the left, knife on the right, and the food right in the middle. And he's eating all you night. You taking some English etiquette class? <laughs> you getting hungry? Defend and then go on the offensive. And clicks of the talk. Good return fire that time. And the round comes to an end. We did have a knockdown in that round. Now, Teddy, if you're in the corner where your man was down on the floor, what are you telling him? Well, the first thing that I do is I sit him down, I get water on the back of his neck, you know, I bring him to his sense, I make sure that he's clear and everything, and then I tell him why he got his backside put on that canvas so he can correct it, and he doesn't go out there and get caught again with the same punch. I would assume there has to come a point in this fight where he has to make the commitment to throw the power punches. It's hard to envision a way he's going to win this fight without going down that road. He doesn't have the confidence to do it. I don't know if he's mentally strong enough to do it. I think he's worried about throwing hard at the guy because maybe in his mind that means the guy will throw hard back at him. Well-placed counterpunch by bad intentions. Fundamentals, good counter punch. Thomas is getting caught with headshots. Teddy, to me, this is pretty simple. Move your head. Otherwise, the other guy will. And he's been moving his head for him all night. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. He comes back with the left hand again. 
This is why we love the sport, Teddy. I mean, this is just back and forth action nonstop. Well, Joe, what special events have happened in history, you remember where you are. Right now, I'm going to remember where I was during this fight. I'm watching a special epic right in front of me. Glad to be here doing it, too. What a war this is. Solid counterpunch by Thomas. He has found his groove with his right hand. Teddy, you know what I'm so impressed by? Obviously, the pace of this fight is just ridiculous. But how hungry these guys are. How badly each guy wants it. Joe, this is the kind of fight that it has nothing to do about money. It has everything to do about legacy. How they're going to be remembered. <laughs> Able to dismiss his opponent's shot. And then comes back with an uppercut. Bad intentions is being smart on the outside. Well targeted counter punch by Thomas. of the round here and as I glance around ringside and look at the judges I'm wondering what they're writing down because that was a tough round to score yeah it was and you know it's the kind of round where one guy would be really smart to take a page out of the book of Sugar Ray Leonard Marvin Hagler where Leonard stole rounds at the end where he just clipped off 30 seconds and that's exactly what the judges remembered Thomas is reaching the point where if things don't change soon there's no way he could possibly win this fight. Clearly trailing every which way on the scorecards. Yeah, he's gonna have to land a big punch, and you know, you start to get into those desperate waters. The more you look for a big punch, the more it's not there, and more importantly, the more you leave yourself wide open. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. Himself. Able to get away from that headshot with the block. And a smart counterpunch by bad intentions. Throws a counterpunch there. Boy, the judges are having an easy time with this because this is clean and effective punching we're seeing out of it. Hey, Joe, remember when you were a kid, your mother and father bought you that painting by the numbers? Oh, I love that. Well, he's punching by the numbers. Taste of the sweet science. You see the skill he has in counter punching. And you know what he's doing? He's taking his opponent's jab away. Beautiful game plan there. Out from range and into the power. Just the way he and his trainer drew it up on the chalkboard. Punch it out. Good job by drawing in his opponent and then landing the counterpunch by bad intentions. The jab has been able to carry the night for him so far. Why so, Teddy? Well, first of all, he's been able to get it off at the right time. His opponent, that sweet spot. You know, you hear about that in, in baseball. You want to hit that ball in the sweet spot. Well, the jab, he's catching his opponent just as he's starting to get into his range before he can get off. Final 10 seconds of the sixth round. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. Six rounds in the books.
Six to go. So swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting his jab go because every time he jabs, he gets caught. Well, we told you it could be this kind of fight and as advertised thus far. Able to get away from that hit. Holy cow! Thomas is in bad shape. He's in bad shape. Maybe a punch or two more, and he's on no the canvas. Holding. Teddy, what does he need to think about now? Well, one of the things that he can't think about, he'd love to run away. <laughs> he'd love to get away from what's hurting him. His legs are not solid enough, so he's going to have to find a way to tie up. Bad intentions is doing a good job tonight on the outside. He's able to score from the outside, keeping a safe distance away from his opponent. after some fine defense by bad intentions. Both men trading hooks. Bad intentions is doing good damage with the combination punching. Well, right there is a good example of the benefit of combination punching. You miss the first or the second, the third and the fourth, they land. Job landing that counter punch, getting away from one that was coming at him. Thomas has got the right idea right here. He cannot be swarmed and smothered like it's a wet blanket with his opponent draped on him. He needs to create that space. He has to push off. Thomas is proving to be elusive. Able to dismiss it. A minute to go in what has been a memorable round. Great stuff from these two. Nice block by Bad Intentions. Taste of the sweet science. You see the skill he has in counter punching. And you know what he's doing? He's taking his opponent's jab away. <laughs> Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. So the end of the round, and now a chance to put the pieces back together. He got stunned in that last round. Yeah, well, he has to get those birds out of his head right now. You know, open that cage up and let him fly out there. And the best way to do that is find out why he got stunned. What did he get hit with? with his guard. <laughs> Thomas has got the right idea right here. He cannot be swarmed and smothered like it's a wet blanket with his opponent draped on him. He needs to create that space. He has to push off. Fight. What a great, great, non-stop action fight this has been. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot and then comes back with an uppercut.
Thomas is showing that he's got some defense of his own. He got away from that punch. Good block there by bad intentions. Bad intentions is doing well sticking to a game plan on the outside. well as he takes you saw it on that exchange able to get away from that headshot with the block the end to another very entertaining round in what has been a very entertaining fight a fight where there's just bad intentions. The fight that just doesn't have the feel of a fight that's going to be a decision win for somebody looks like somebody's going to get stopped. Right from the beginning, they've been fighting with desperation. Like, going the decision, as you just touched on, has not been in their minds at all. Blocks that punch. Well off the mark by Thomas. Thomas's energy level is not what it should be. You can just tell. His movement has slowed a little bit. He's breathing through the mouth. Almost looks like he's just trying to get through this rather than engage in it. And right now he's going to be in a lot of trouble if his opponent picks up on that. And his opponent picks up that pace, which he should right about now. Thomas is doing a good job of just creating some space there, just pushing off. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. Able to cover up that gut. Good, strong uppercut. He comes right back with it after taking one. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. He likes to fight on the outside, but right now he's taking some punishment. Well, he's standing up tall. He's on the outside, but he's allowing his opponent to get into places where he can find them. Standing straight up. Comes right back with a shot of his own. Good block there by bad intentions. This is great stuff. I mean, great stuff. Bringing it every which way they are. Joe, you remember the time you were on a vacation, you saw that perfect sunset? Oh, yeah. It was just beautiful. This is beautiful. Teddy with your ringside. It's turning out to be a very good fight because it's very competitive. It's one of those fights that's really hard to score. Yeah, it is hard to score. It's going to be up to the judges now. Hopefully they've been watching the way they need to watch and they're competent enough to make sure that, that it's not just a matter of who's throwing, but, you know, who's really landing.
rid of that one. There's a taste of his sweet science. You see the skill he has in counterpunching. And you know what he's doing? He's taking his opponent's jab away. away very clever move there a little defense turns to offense the counter punch by bad intentions what a good counter punch by Thomas off the mark by Thomas. Good defense just covering up down low. Thomas's cheek is cut and you can see it's opening up now. Boy, that could be a factor later on. One minute to go in this round. Neither man has decided to slow down at all. Oh boy, what a round. Well, he took one right there, but then he targeted one right back. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. Showing you some defense there with the block. We come to the end of this round. Alongside Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Boy, it's a very closely contested fight, isn't it? Yeah, it has been, Joe, but it's going to be up now to the judges. Hopefully they have their eyes wide open because they're going to have to look really closely, not just at the action overall, but who's landed the cleaner, more effective punches. Nothing there on the punch by Thomas. And that is not what his opponent really wants. He's backed up against the rope. Nice block by Thomas. This is why we love the sport, Teddy. I mean, this is just back and forth action nonstop. Well, Joe, what special events have happened in history, you remember where you are. Right now, I'm going to remember where I was during this fight. I'm watching a special epic right in front of me. Glad to be here doing it, too. What a war this is. has got the right idea right here. He cannot be swarmed and smothered like it's a wet blanket with his opponent draped on him. He needs to create that space. He has to push off. Blocks that punch. Nice combination by Bad Intentions.
Thomas is able to avoid that punch. We come to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that and say, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is, if I'm a judge, I take a little notepad and I make a little mark down blue and red corner what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. by Thomas. Return to sender. He gives him back one of his own. Nice block by bad intentions. Carries that punch intended for the head. Good return fire that time. What a great round. Two minutes in, 60 seconds to go. Dismiss that body shot. The judges have put down their scores as we come to the end of a very exciting back and forth fight. Let's send it up to the ring announcer to hear which way it goes. is your winner by unanimous decision all three judges giving it to him i didn't agree with the judges completely but 